Alright guys, so let's keep building off of uh, that past cup demo, uh, that basic 9 to 3 ratio, and this time we're going to put a little bit more surface work. Um, and what we're going to do is, is actually make that surface work while it's flat, so that way we can kind of have the ability to work on a flat pattern uh, that then gets translated uh, as we stand the form up. So we're just going to blast through those first couple of techniques again. Uh, this time I'm already starting off with a nice square slab. And we are just going to stretch it out. You notice too, the, the more time goes on, the better you get at making those slabs, uh, the less time I have to tend to reshaping them. Um, but no matter what, I'm always still continuing to reshape and just make sure that they don't get out of control. There we go, that's perfect. Alright. So again, we are going to cut our 12 inch line. And I lost my knife. There we go. So we have our 12 inches. And for this guy, we will go for about a four inch tall form. Alrighty. Almost there. Okay, here we go. So then we'll remove all that scrap. Anytime you can really clean up your workspace, uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, not because I'm a clean freak, you can tell by my studio that I'm very far from that. Uh, but I just don't need any more visual distraction. Okay, so we are cutting our circle and just making sure that we keep on that 45 degree angle. Again, I'm just going to make sure that I can lift that up so it's not sealed down. All right, now when it comes to doing a little surface work onto this slab. What I'm going to do, and again, this is that, uh, keep in mind we're at that 9 to 3 ratio. So this is a 9 inch slab that we're dealing with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in an inch and a half ballpark. And I'm just going to make the slightest little mark. So I know that I'm an inch and a half on both sides. From here, I'm going to find that halfway point, uh, which would put us right at that three inch marker. Okay, so there's our halfway. And then again, I'm going to find that halfway point between that inch and a half and three inch marker that we just did, which would be another inch and a half. So here we go. So again, what we're going to be looking at is an inch and a half uh, incrementations coming from those sides. All right, and sometimes I just loosely kind of make these marks just so I have a visual. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, from here, the other thing is, I like to start thinking about, uh, you know, making those cuts beforehand. As opposed to that last cup that we actually made, uh, this time the surface that we're working on will be the exterior of the form. So last time we had had all of our, cup, our, our cuts made so that we picked the form up, we wrapped it around this form, um, and the exterior was actually the side on the table. We're going to try to reverse that. So what I want to do is actually just change uh, where all the cuts are made or the directions of them. So we'll start uh, right from the bottom and we will make 
are cut in. That is the big one that has to change. Okay, I'm just going to lift that up just so that we can separate our scrap clay. Get rid of that. Okay, and beyond that, our side angles are able to stay the same. However, that bottom one is key. Okay, beautiful. Now what we're gonna do is, within every one of those little panels, we're gonna make a texture. Um, you could do really anything that you wanted. It could be as simple as a fork or a knife. You could get into very intricate patterns or really press anything um, into the clay. I'm gonna go with a very uh, straightforward one and I'm just gonna use a bottle cap. And I'm just gonna roll my bottle cap from top to bottom on every other panel. Okay. Sometimes I like to pierce those bottle caps and really kind of put a screw through it so that it's just a little bit more fluid. Uh, but there is something really fun about drawing with that. Great. So now we're at the point where we have some type of surface design on every other panel. From here, we're just gonna score both sides of this form and we're gonna get it ready to actually put it up. Again, score it all the way around. Grab our spray bottle and just give it a nice Quick little mist. All right. So here we will grab our wear board. Again, I will lift up my bottom. Sometimes I need to use a knife just to get underneath it. We're gonna pick this piece up, and again, remember this time, the top surface will be the exterior of the form. We'll lift those. Let's start with that edge, place that down. Work itself all the way around, again. Always feels so good when those patterns meet together perfectly. All right. So one of the great things about uh, using that measurement system is essentially that it's going to break things into very simple grids. And when you go to fold the piece up, you're gonna have your piece line up perfectly uh, in line with that pattern. Um, when it comes to generating patterns like that, uh, you know, the math goes a long way, but I say at the end of the day, it's just studio practice. So get in there, play around with different measurements. You're, you'd be amazed at how different forms look as you stand them up and stretch them. Um, when things are flat, sometimes, uh, you know, really, um, Oh, wide facets or wide pieces of pattern uh, look like a really good idea. Sometimes they're very bulky when they actually stand up or wrap around a form or vice versa. So I always just recommend uh, really experimenting with them as much as possible. Um, again, those basics when it comes to finishing that form, I'm just going to work my material back and forth. Okay, we'll smooth over that lip. 
Again, the same as the last time, I'll probably let this guy set up a little bit. I will just flip it. We'll just tend to that area. Give it a nice little roll. And then we will let that set up before we start playing. Alright, so now that we have our cup that is set up for a couple of hours, uh, we can see it's, or you can't see, but I can see, um, it's still very malleable, but it has uh, definitely stiffened up to the point where if I hold it on its side like that, it's not drooping down or collapsing. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just really continue to work that seam, make sure I just have a great connection. So again, I'm just going to rotate that piece back and forth. And then just smooth over anything that I feel needs to be tended to. In other words, if I have any exposed seam, I'm just going to work that clay back and forth. All right. All right, from here, from here again, we'll kind of treat that bottom. Make sure our connections down there are looking great. I'll wait until the very end before I do any aesthetic work on the bottom. That tends to be one of the last things that I do. But in the meantime, what I'm going to play around with is a little bit of shaping. So rather than just having a full on straight wall, it will be fun to actually get a little bit more attitude to this piece. So the first thing that I'm going to do is literally stretch the form out a little bit. And I'm going to stretch the bottom out as I do this. Um, what I'm going to do is essentially just start uh, slamming, slamming is a harsh word, but, but uh, mildly forcefully pushing the cup against the wear table and allowing that bottom to stretch a little. So this is definitely going to oblong it. But I like the idea of that. I like that we'll have a bottom that is now oblong. And for that top, we will go back and make sure we get that back to perfection. Um, nice. So we stretched it out just a little bit there. I kind of like that it feels a little bit narrow down there. So I might actually just pinch it a little bit right at that bottom. And then we'll try to give it a pretty fair amount of, uh, of kind of a stretch. So I think for me, I'm going to look at the areas that I want to stretch. And it's generally going to be up over here. I think we'll try to, we'll try to give this, this piece a little bit of a curve. So what I'm going to do is apply a little bit of pressure from the interior. And I like to just support that form on the exterior as I push it. Um, even if I'm not really applying pressure with my left hand, it just uh, you know kind of keeps me balanced. It keeps me knowing where my hands are relative to one another. Okay. And then opposite of where I just bulged out, I'm literally gonna just tap that in. You can see as I tapped it, a little bit bulged out there. So I'm just gonna work that top ever so slightly. All right, I am digging this piece. So I'm again gonna go back to that top lip uh, and we're just gonna kind of thin that lip out. And I prefer taking the back side of my knife. And we're just going to remove 
some of that excess material and try to really thin this out. If you are somebody that's more bold or aggressive within your work, uh, you can use the front side of your knife. However, just be aware about how much you are going to cut in. I tend to take a lot of baby steps rather than being all that aggressive. Getting there. One thing I always go for is just a nice kind of sharp angle because I feel that when you actually use the forms to drink out of, you don't get as much of a dribble. If you have a very flat top to it, um, that's where you can tend to see a lot of those kind of dribblings as it goes over the edge that doesn't quite hit that point. Uh, and it will, the fluid will literally stick onto the cup and keep moving on you. Um, Alright. You know, this is one of those moments at that top where I like to grab some of those soft sponges. So I tend to just have one of those really basic pottery sponges kicking around, but uh, any type of a textural sponge, uh, things that you would get at a craft store, or things that you'd use for makeup, especially if you have one that you're getting rid of, uh, would be great to transition it into the clay studio. And I'm just gently going to get that sponge along that edge. Now for this piece, we're not going to hop into any traditional handles um, because we're going to save that for the next video. But I would like to put just two kind of little, little goobers on there. Um, goober, goober is a, a technical term. Meaning blob of clay. Alright, so I'm just going to make these two kind of ball type forms. We'll even them up a little bit within their size or weight. Let's we'll see. You know what I'm going to do to texture them? I have no clue if this is going to work. Uh, but I'm just going to roll my fork back and forth, actually similar to how my grandmother used to make gnocchi. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> didn't work very well. I'll take it. Alright. We do have some marks there. I'll, t I'll take whatever I can get. So from there, again, this is Partly just aesthetic, but also, also in part because of how I want to actually hold it. And I'm just going to place those two little goobers on there. I'm going to mark where they're going to go. This is just a piece of bamboo, nothing too fancy. my knife to do some scoring. Right, we will dab a little bit of water. This is the third variation if you don't have your spray bottle and if you don't have a brush then you can always just grab a wet sponge. 
And I will score both sides. Beautiful. Oh, always losing that spray by a So we've got a little bit of moisture on both sides. Here is, as I press in, I just want to give these little turns as I do it. Just these tiny turns back and forth. So for the bottom on this one, I'm just going to give a little pressure. And we'll just give it a nice little arch. Maybe because I'm never content with pieces. We'll go and I'll utilize just the very tip of uh, my knife. And we will just press down along that edge give it a little bit of uh, visual information down there. The other thing that I love for doing uh, this type of work right at the edge on the bottom is it tends to lift the pots up a little bit. So it makes them feel just a little bit lighter and it tends to make them feel like they're about ready to walk away. Uh, which is something that I gravitate towards. Remember, no piece is complete without you signing it. So I'm just going to sign at that very bottom. Alright. We'll let that guy dry. And uh, give it a couple of days. We're just going to pan forward. Give that nice little bottom with that signature. And there is that cup. Again, a little bit of funk, a little attitude. It'll be kind of a nice one to hang on to and hold.